So there are four primary ways we're protecting your private information, your identifying information. And the first is to start out with the best security we can possibly get. We have had experts from cybersecurity within the government, uh, industry experts, academic experts on security, helping us to make sure that we're using the latest, greatest technologies to protect your private information. The second is really de-identifying information. I mean, the moment any uh, information about your address or your phone number comes into our systems, we de-identify it. We strip that away so that only uh, a few people who are on the frontline staff would ever need to access that information. And the third is really about making sure that that frontline staff or anybody else only have access to the information that they need to know. The frontline staff are the only people that may be reaching out to you to contact you to say, hey, come in for a, a blood draw or uh, sending you an email that says, hey, don't forget, you haven't actually done this survey. But nobody else has access to that information and it's certainly prevented and stripped away before it goes to the researchers. Which leads to the fourth, the researchers themselves, whether they're a citizen scientist or a top university trying to access this data, have to make a commitment and sign a commitment that they will not try to re-identify you. So your data is already de-identified and on top of that they're making that promise and as they get access to the data that may be more risky and different layers that create some risk of identification like your genetics information, they actually have to take an online training that reminds them of their commitment and helps them understand all the steps they need to do to make sure to secure your identity and protect that from nosy people on the outside.